everybody. Uh, in this video, we're going to talk about growing your plants. Now, you normally have two traditional options when it, when it comes to the plants you're going to plant in your garden. And one of them, and I do this every so often, is to get a seedling from your local garden store, or nursery, whatever. Um, and then the other one is to start them yourself. Now, let's look at a couple of things. First of all, this little plant here cost me about $3.50, right around there. And then this little packet here, this one cost just under $2. Um, whereas this is one plant, and I might get maybe a pound of fruit off of there. It's a pepper plant. Um, where this little packet has a lot of little seeds in there. And um, that makes it, well, let's find out. Because I'm going to count the seeds. Moves like a freight train, step with a heavy weight, barreling down for many years. Delivering loads of pain, fueling again and again, any hope caught in your smoke just disappears. You draw a hard line in the sand, you then walk a wire when they're much too young to stand. That packet had 29 cucumber seeds in it. So just assuming that one in four would actually germinate, that's approximately seven plants that I got for $2 compared to the one plant for $3.50. So, and that's the kind of thought process you have to think of. If you start them from seed, it's a lot cheaper. And as I've made it very clear, I don't have a lot of cash. And in fact, I can do you one better. Last year for Thanksgiving, I made a pumpkin pie from a pumpkin, not a can. Oh my God, can you believe it? It was great. I don't know why, and it was incredibly easy. I don't know why I hadn't done this much, much earlier, but um, what you do is, and we'll go over that when the time comes, I will make a video and show you how to do it. <laughs> but what I did, you scoop out, you scoop out the seeds, just like you're gonna make a jack-o'-lantern, you scoop out the seeds and you clean them off and you dry them out and you store them in your freezer. In, in, in a, you dry them out, you seal them up real good and you store them in the freezer. That's the best place to keep your uh, seeds when you're not dealing with them. And I got myself a whole huge, it, this thing is full of pie pumpkin seeds. I, you know, it's crazy. And that, made, and because it was a byproduct of what I was otherwise doing, I didn't buy it for the seeds. That was just like, oh my God, they're seeds, let's dry them. That made them pretty much free. And I did the same thing here. Um, I don't know if you can read it, but uh, this is a packet of seeds from an Anaheim chili pepper that once again, I bought at the store and I scooped out the seeds and I cleaned them off and dried them and kept them. And I've got two Anaheim uh, plants out there from those seeds. So see, the longer you go, the less expensive it becomes. So there we go. Okay, right now I'm gonna go over two different methods of seed germination. Uh, one works well for some seeds and the other one works well for others. We'll start with dirt. And um, my husband, we're, what we're doing is we're working with pickling cucumbers because my husband wants um, about four plants, which should give him approximately three uh, quart jars of pickles. Mm -hmm. Really good. So um, by my math, if I assume one in four seeds will germinate, that, that means I have to plant 16 to start. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put eight in the dirt and I'm going to re put the other eight in the other method. So, and this dirt is potting soil from a bag. That way I know that I'm not worried about bugs or anything that might have been living in there eat eating my seeds or whatever. And basically this little container here is going to impersonate a little greenhouse. And um, the one drawback that I've noticed, besides dropping my seeds to nowhere, is that none of these seed packets tell you the ideal temperature that will help your seeds germinate properly. But there's this wonderful thing called the interwebs where you can look that information up. And what we did was we found that for these pickling cucumbers, 
The perfect temperature is somewhere between 78 and 82 degrees Fahrenheit, um, not Celsius. No. Uh, so right around 80 degrees Fahrenheit. And um, what you want to do, you don't want it to be too wet because then your seeds will just rot and they'll never do anything else. What we're going to do, there's a little moisture left over from it being in the bag, and you want to lay them out. You want to still be able to see the seeds when you, you kind of push them into the surface, but you still want to see them, right? So we put our eight in here, tuck them in there, in the space. Yay! Six. So what I'm going to do now, and it's a, one of the best ways that we've found to control the moisture that your seeds are going to get, is I'm going to lay this wonderful thing on top. It's called paper towels. Um, I'm going to get them wet, not just damp, but a little wet, but uh, not, you know, you'll figure it out. And what we'll do is we'll just lay it on top, and it'll hold the proper amount of moisture that these seeds will need. Uh, to do their thing. So get this in here. Wee. I'm using filtered water because again, chlorine is not good for for what you're doing. It'll start killing things and you want things to be alive in here. So it's not too wet, not too dry. Lay it right on top. And then um, thank you Dollar Tree and Betty Crocker for this little greenhouse I've got here. I'm going to close it up. Now we know from experience that probably the best place in the whole house to put this is going to be in the cabinet right above my refrigerator because it's sitting right above um, the coils that are on the back that heat everything up and it keeps that little cabinet right around 80 degrees and I have some chocolate bars to prove that. So Get that ready and we'll get that going. Okay, now for the second method. Um, and it's kind of interesting. I only just learned about this recently, but, and it also involves paper towels. And what you're going to do is you're actually going to fold it in half and then fold it in half again. And then you want to get it wet just like it. Just like a, with the dirt method, not too wet, not too dry. So and we'll kind of lay this out here. And we'll take our eight seeds and lay them out. You don't want them to really be touching. You want them to have their own space. So, and there's my African gray parrot trying to get in on the conversation again. There we go, sticking to my fingers. There we go. And you cover them with the other half, just like that. I take my little zipper top bag. Now I'm opening my little bag so I don't fight with it later. Grab my paper towel full of seeds, tuck it in here. You don't really want to actually what? zipper it all the way closed. You want to zipper it most of the way closed but you want to leave a little bit for a little bit of air circulation. You don't want to suffocate your seeds. Um, and what you want to do is if you want to, if you have a permanent marker, you just mark a bag with what's in there, which is what I normally do because I'm usually doing a lot of different types of things at once. Um, another way is you can go to your local wonderful garden uh, supply center known as the Dollar Tree or Dollar General or whatever discount store you have and get your little popsicle sticks wow. and and mark a popsicle stick and tuck it in the bag uh, which is what I'm going to do here and since mine are cucumbers I'm going to use a, a green stick so and there you go that's how you do it thank you so much for watching we're going to keep an eye on this um, for the next few days now that you, you know that you have this marked or whatever we uh, wanted to try something a little bit different this time uh, for this bag, 
And that's because, and I came up with this idea and it blew my husband away because we have in this wonderful house, a freshwater fish tank and it stays at 80 degrees Fahrenheit all the time. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this little bag and we're going to tape it to the side of the tank um, and then cover that part with a towel so it has full temperature control. Um, and then we'll see how that goes. This should um, start germinating in about a week or so is what it usually takes. And um, we'll keep an eye on them and we'll let you see what happens when we're done. So it's been three days since we started the seed germination project and I wanted to take a little PC and th see how things were going. So I will start with the paper towel in the, in the plastic bag part. So. What I can tell you is that we did verify through the course of these three days that this uh, paper towel was always damp, wet, and um, that it was at the controlled 80 degrees because I always look at my the temperature on my fish tank. So let me see how to open this. There it is. Oh wow, look at that. It's already set out some roots. See, the roots are that long from here to there. And see, there's a couple that didn't, one is starting to and one that didn't germinate. And I think it's because these were sitting at the bottom of the bag and I think they might have gotten a, sat a, a little too wet for them. But see how they're doing really well? And I'm going to put these back in and let them sit for a few days longer before we actually plant them. Okay, so now I'm going to open the little box and see how that was going. And that stayed above my refrigerator and with that constant temperature. So. Let's open this. Okay. Pop this baby right open. And the paper towel is still damp and it's, it's a little high. Oh my goodness! So, I don't know if you can see this, but these German elf, all eight of them germinated and a few of them are actually an inch tall already, just after three days. And when you look up online, or actually on the back of the bag, how long it takes to germinate these seeds, it says 10 days. Here we're at three. So, and they're looking really good. So there's something to be said for germinating your seeds in good old fashioned rich soil. Because although that was doing good, this one's even bigger. See? They were right there. So there's a few observations that I want to share with you in closing. In my opinion, this is the winner. And I'll explain a couple reasons why. I can tell by looking in this one that I've got a good inch and a half to two inches of uh, roots on them. And quite honestly, um, only one of these did not germinate. But over here, all eight of them germinated. And I can tell from looking underneath that the, the roots are at least as long, if not longer. Um, but what's interesting is that the sprouts are so much taller in here than they are in here. And what's even more interesting is the tall ones are at the deep end of the, of the soil. This is something we noticed. Now, um, in the paper towel method, the roots are there and they're nice and healthy and strong, but they're also intertwined in the paper towel. And um, one way to deal with that would be to cut the paper towel and just plant it all. Which would not be a bad idea, except that I can see where all three of these right here, their roots are right up against each other. So that's going to be difficult, one way or the other. Um, but yeah, the, um, and if you're wondering about the color, because these are very bright green and these are very pale. And we actually realized it's because this box has been sitting inside of a cabinet where the temperature has been um, very steady, perfectly warm. Um, there's also no sunlight, no ambient sunlight. Whereas this, although we had it taped to the side of the fish tank and covered by a towel, um, that fish tank sits next to the sliding glass door 
and um, was still getting enough ambient sunlight that they could be this green. So there you have it. Oh, and before I forget, another reason why the ones in the soil are the winners is because um, I know that I can leave them in here for maybe even a few weeks. And they don't even have to be moved or planted until they start to tangle and I have to thin it out. Whereas the ones in the paper towel, it won't take long before them to become nutrient deficient and, um, and then basically rot and die. So these have to be planted fairly soon, which um, will very likely increase the mortality rate and therefore um, that will cause the problem. So uh, thank you so much. I hope, uh, I hope I make you happy. I'm very grateful for you uh, watching my videos to, to give me likes and for subscribing to my channel. And I love you guys and um, I will see you next time. So get out and garden.